This is a short video about what it means for set to be open in a metric space. So open sets in a metric space. Remember all a metric space is, is you've got a set X when you, you know, you've listed a bunch of things, but then it also makes sense to talk about how far apart those things in the set are. And that's that D, that's that metric that you're using. So what does it mean to be an open set in a metric space? Um, in a video before this, we talked about what an open ball was. So um, recall um, a ball centered at some point, say A, we're using D as the metric here. So some point A, A is an element of your set X, uh, of say radius epsilon, think of that as a radius. What is it? You should just think of it as, it's the set of all other stuff that's an X. And what's the criteria to be in this set? So it's all the stuff in X, such that the distance from A to X is strictly less than whatever that radius epsilon is that we've specified. It's called an epsilon ball, or I'll just say um, an open ball centered at A of radius epsilon. Does that say radius? Um, I'll try again. Centered at A of radius epsilon. And so what we want to try to do then is define what is just an open set then in a metric space. So we will say that some sets say U, U's a good letter for open. So let's say U, if that's a subset of X, we'll say U subset of X is open. So this set is open. So open is this adjective I'm using to describe this set U. If for any, let's say X that lives in U, um, there uh, exists. So I could write it in words. There is um, a ball, B, D, X, Epsilon. So you should be able to find some radius Epsilon such that B, D, X, Epsilon is completely contained inside of you. So let me give you a picture about what this is trying to say. Again, it's pretty common to draw blobs in a topology class. So here's the set, here's the set U here. It's also pretty common to go with intuition from like a college algebra kind of class, open intervals and stuff like parentheses or like dotted lines. So I'm gonna draw, here's this blob, and you have these dotted lines here. So my point is, this is you. You should be able to, for, for, for any X that you picked out in there, so I'll use this one here, we should be able to just find some radius so that the ball centered at X of that radius epsilon is completely contained inside of you. So that green ball that I just drew is totally inside of you. And you should be able to do that for every single point in your set. So to, to give you an idea again, like uh, that's a picture of what open is. So like for some examples here, something like um, zero, one and R, if I'm using the usual metric, so like the absolute value, so zero, one, is open. So like how come, you know, if you were to, just for example, um, if you were to say pick a point like a half, is it possible to put another interval with parentheses around a half that's completely contained inside this one? Sure. So like, for example, if one half is in here, so maybe I should say um, one half is like for any X that you pick, can you demonstrate that there's some interval that contains a half that's also contained in here? And so if X equals a half, then you could pick epsilon to be, say, uh, about one-fourth. So then you've got this window from one-fourth to three-fourths in that contains your point one-half. And also, this is completely contained in here. So I hope that that kind of demonstrates specifically what's supposed to happen generally all the time. Again, that's not a proof. That's just to give you intuition for what this definition is trying to say. Um, moving on from that, there are some... Um, so we've got this word open now, so that is kind of the buzzword here, let's do that. There are some properties that we always want to attach to this word open. And so what are some things we can expect about open sets in a metric space? And so some things we can expect, this would be like a theorem. And so um, how about X? I'll do this. So if you're in a metric space, X still, just metric is D, just like it is for the video. There's three things that are gonna happen in this theorem I'm gonna write down. X and the empty set, always open. 
uh, the second thing. So in other words, we're always going to use the adjective open to describe these, whatever open means. Um, the next thing, well, we know what open means. It means this up here. Anyway, the next thing we should have happen, the union of opens should be open. So the union of, and in particular, of any collection. So it shouldn't matter how many things you're taking the, the uh, union of. M any is the important word. Any collection of open sets is open. And then the third thing, the intersection of finitely many of any, or another way to say that is any finite collection of open sets is open. So I'm going to demonstrate these three things, um, why they should be true, let's say for like the, again, the real numbers are a good place. Um, so what we're trying to say, you know, for the real numbers, let's say that's my example, let's say x is equal to r, d equals usual, dxy equals absolute value of x minus y. And so what are the open balls that are determined by this thing here? We know that they themselves are just intervals. And so we have, um, you can think of open sets as um, maybe being formed, formed from open intervals that look like A, B. I'll be a lot more precise about what do I mean by being formed from, um, which we're going to talk about something later on called a basis. Um, but just so far, those are like your intuition for what open sets actually are. And so what I'm trying to say to you is that like, you know, one, two, union, three, four, union, something random, 17, 3000, and I could just keep union and stuff or I could stop there, it doesn't really matter, is still considered an open set. And so like, what's the idea for that? If you were to pick any number that's in, say, one of these intervals here, let's say I picked 18 as in this one, if you looked at x equals 18, could you find an interval to put around 18 that's still contained in these? And uh, sure, I could put like the interval from like 17.9 to 18.1, and that's just contained in this one, hence it's contained in the whole union. So nothing too crazy there. Um, on the other hand, what if, what, what's the business about this number three? The intersection of f a finite collection of open sets is open. So maybe an example that breaks that would be more interesting. And so for another example, if I was to still keep X is R and D is the usual metric here. And so be careful with three. So what if you were to take something like, uh, let's say UN, I'm gonna talk about a bunch of different sets. Let's say it's the interval from minus one over N to one over N. Now, I use parentheses on these, so this must be an open set. I mean, it's just an open interval, that's fine. And what I'm doing is I'm thinking about, you know, so u1 is from minus one to one. u2 is from uh, minus one half to a half. What I hope you think about is that as n gets bigger, these intervals are shrinking. So if you think about like a picture of what's that look like on the real line, uh, it looks like minus one to one, minus a half to a half, next one would be minus a third to a third, so on. I hope that you see that they're starting to shrink. And then my question is, well, what's the overlap of all these things? In other words, what's the intersection for all n and n of these un here's? So what is the point that always lies inside every single one of these as they collapse and they shrink further and further down? Well, the only point that fits inside of there is just zero uh, itself in this case. On the other hand, though, that's not good. So I've got this infinite intersection here, and that infinite intersection is really just 1.0. This thing is not open in R. So why not? It's not open in R. So just this single point zero does not satisfy this definition up here about what it means to be open. And so remember, to say that the point zero is open, that means that given any point in your set, so zero itself, you should be able to put a ball of positive radius around zero such that every point in that ball is contained in your set too. But to, again, kind of draw you a picture here. Here's my point zero here. It's saying that I must be able to find some epsilon 
of positive radius again that guarantees that everything in green is really just that white point zero. If that made no sense to you, that's good because that's impossible, that's silly. So we violated that definition of open. So again, unions are very nice as far as open goes. Unions of opens always open no matter how many you have. Intersections are tricky. You can only intersect a few things at a time, maybe a hundred things, maybe a million things, but not infinitely many things at a time. You're not guaranteed that that's open.